What's going on guys, it's JSGC here and we are here for the Tottenham Hotspur Manchester City match review. Obviously I'm doing this from the Manchester City perspective and the perspective from us is we're now just one win away from the title again, mathematically now, or a Manchester United loss. We've been looking for a response, we've been looking for this for the last week and a half, ever since that match at Anfield when we've had blood running, we wanted to make a response, we had the response against Manchester United, we clapped second half, we had the response in the first half of the Champions League match, again, we couldn't control ourselves and we ended up collapsing in the second half. In this match, we responded again in the first half, they managed to get a goal, we managed to sort ourselves out defensively, and we managed to push on and grab a winner. And it's really nice to win again. And it's really nice now. Because everyone's been saying, a Man City going to blow it. A Man City going to do this. A Man City going to do that. Could they do this? Could they do that? We've managed to break this now. We're now just one win away. We've got five games to go and do that. We've got records to go and break. So hopefully now the team can use that as momentum. Let's face it. The team, they looked absolutely knackered in this game. That pitch at Wembley is massive. Man City were tired. Tottenham looked a bit leggy in my opinion too. Both teams are starting to tire. Both teams need to start resting their players. It's been a long, hard season. There's still, for Tottenham, a, they've also got another match in the FA Cup semi-final and the final if they end up getting there. They look tired, so I imagine they'll be resting players midweek. Manchester United will start showing the signs of the same. Liverpool, they will not want to show, start showing signs of uh, being tired because why the Champions League will end up uh, going out. So they're going to have to start resting players. So it makes it a little bit unpredictable as to where teams in that top four are going to start finishing. But for us, I don't really care about that. All I care about is finishing in first and having that Premier League sorted ASAP. And in my opinion, we've near enough got that now. So we're going to get on with the review of the game. And for the first 20 minutes or so, it was a bit nip and tuck. We were dominating in the game. Tottenham, they weren't really getting forward. There wasn't anything free-flowing there. And we were dominating and it was nice to see. And I remember saying... Uh, I was thinking anyway that I wanted us to go and show a goal for our dominance and we did and it was just a simple ball over the top remember the match at Wembley for the Carabao Cup final when Bravo got an assist to stress Sergio Aguero the exact same happened here Tottenham put the press they pushed up pressed Man City company just went long straight over the defence the defence didn't deal with it Jesus took one touch and his one touch was fantastic to take out the defender and put himself in a fabulous goal scoring opportunity where he just placed it past Lloris and it was like the Jesus of what you see for Brazil it was fantastic and we were one nil ahead and from there we're like vultures when we get in them situations Tottenham then the organization just for a couple of minutes it wasn't there they looked all over the place defensively they looked like what Man City looked like when we go about defensively and this time Raheem Sterling set apart and uh, sliding in on a challenge was Lloris he misses the ball takes Raheem Sterling uh, then the advantage is played and the ball squared across and for some reason Jesus doesn't take it first time and tap in. Instead he tries to take it round the player, he gets tackled and the referee says there's no advantage there and gives a penalty and books Lloris. The challenge was a bit nasty in my opinion. A yellow card, the correct result in my opinion. I didn't think it was a red card because I didn't think there was anything malicious in it. The word malicious very important here. But it was outside the box and it shouldn't have been a penalty. So Tottenham can feel hard done by their Gundogan with a perfect penalty off the inside of the post and in. Just what we needed, 2-0 up. We had something to show for our dominance. and We just wanted a third. All we need, we need three goals. The game's signed and sealed, which naturally means that Tottenham go and grab a goal. But before I get to that one, there was a nasty challenge from Ben Davis that I want to mention where the word malicious I was mentioning before, this was malicious. It was completely deliberate. He was nowhere near the ball. He was going for the man and he studs up, studs Vincent Company, and he should have been sent off. And I don't know why he weren't sent off. It was a disgusting challenge. Moving on, uh, Laporte, go, uh, Harry Kane plays in Christian Eriksen on the 42nd minute. Laporte slides in. Edison looked like he had it covered. Laporte makes a great challenge, in my opinion. It's just simply unlucky that the ball ends up rebounding off Christian Eriksen, bouncing over the advancing Edison and into the net, and it makes it 2 1, and we're a bit pensive. And Tottenham are gunning for us, uh, so I was happy to hear the half time whistle. We managed to get a grip in the second half. Tottenham were coming forward. They're looking dangerous, but they didn't have any shots. So Man City were able to counter-attack it. We managed to get De Bruyne and David Silva involved in the game again uh, into the second half after they looked a bit shy. Uh, and we kept doing these passes to Lira Sane, Ryan Sterling and Jesus cutting out the whole of the midfield and they were losing the ball and Tottenham were really making uh, gains on us 
play of the Tongan was absolutely fantastic in this game, I thought. But eventually, we managed to get them to involve the two midfielders. They were pulling strings again. We were getting balled over, and Ryan Sterling was set ahead. He missed a couple of good opportunities. He managed to take away his uh, the third, though, on the 72nd minute after just missing a good opportunity. He managed to make amends for it after a low shot from, I think it was Otamendi, was well saved by Loris, and uh, Sterling's there just to poach it in, put it into the roof of the net. Game set and match and I feel dead happy there for Raheem he had a good game he's responded well and he's missed chances again it's so easy for him just to fade away uh, and just uh, you know what I mean just go into your shell he didn't he put the ball into the net I'm sure he feels fantastic right now uh, and fantastic three points means we're now just one win away Tottenham are going to be focusing on the FA Cup you would think uh, they've still got Chelsea looking over the shoulders. They've still got uh, five or six games, I think, remaining. And they've still got seven points there uh, clear of Chelsea. So they're going to want to uh, pick up them wins, pick up maybe two, three more wins, seal the Champions League football for their new stadium next season and maybe try and get to an FA Cup final too. We'll have to see about that next weekend. But the look at some stats for this game, very interesting. 52%. Remember in my preview when I said that 54% to 46 at the Etihad? This was 52 to 48 in Man City's favour. Pushed all the way by Spurs in terms of possession. Man City normally have 65, 70, 75, even 80% possession against teams. So this pitch is massive. The passing sums that up by Man City making only 513 passes when we normally make 800, 900, even 1,000 passes in a game an 83% pass completion rate when it's normally around 90 to 92. That pitch is huge. It allows Tottenham to do that press and it allows Man City, uh, like I said, a bit of fatigue, I think, uh, getting into the team there uh, as down how many passes were made in the game because it's still, in my opinion, around 100, 150 below what it could be. Tottenham ended up making 460. There's only 50 passes that were away from us and they were working at an 80% pass completion rate. So really, really close in terms of... Um, attacking stats there in my opinion Man City did dominate the shots though they ended up having uh, twice as many shots as Spurs having 17 shots to 8 Man City had 6 on target to the 3 we were clinical in this game I was happy referees decisions didn't help Spurs with the penalty but Ben Davis should have been sent off has that evened it out I do not know let me know what you think in the comments below there but uh, Overall, I'm happy with that. I'm, I am. I'm happy with that. I'm happy just to take a win. I'd have been more than happy for a draw. I'm happy to take the win. It now means that the title now near enough over. Even if we pick up um, a, just a point or so, just keep things ticking along. But with a home match against Swansea, we can get it done. We can then start resting players. We can have the players looking fresh uh, for the World Cup. So I'm talking for England's perspective. We're talking uh, John Stones may, may not uh, will be able to get some minutes. So he'll be able to get some game time and improve his chances for the World Cup. Raheem Sterling will be able to have a rest. Maybe in Delphi ends up going to be able to have a rest and also for other teams. So uh, Lira Sane looks like he needs a rest. Uh, De Bruyne, David Silva, Otamendi, like he had a rest in this game. It's a company excellent. Laporte will be able to get some minutes. Walker will be able to have a rest too. Do you know where I'm going with this? We'll be able to rest some players and it'll benefit a lot of sides for the World Cup when that does come about. Spurs did dominate. They had more crosses. They had more tackled. They had more touches nearly as well and uh, they dominated. the defensive stats were quite close but again Tottenham were just ahead on the defensive stats so in my opinion this is one of the closest stats that I've seen going toe for toe for City unfortunately Tottenham didn't have the quality there. They couldn't really get Harry Kane involved in the game that much. I thought that we were excellent in keeping Harry Kane out I'm just wondering why Tottenham didn't go with Sun in the side and they went with Lamella instead. I'm not too sure that, that didn't make sense dude because I think Sun's been outstanding for Tottenham this season I think we got away with that one uh, and I was a bit disappointed with Tottenham's two defensive midfielders that they played. They didn't really seem to get involved into the game. Eric Dyer was good at, in stages and then not so good in others. Uh, Dembele uh, wasn't what we saw at White Hart Lane last season. Uh, I'm not too sure if, why Wanyama weren't there. Is he injured or something? I don't know. I'm not a Tottenham fan. I don't know a lot about uh, Tottenham's team, if I'm honest with you, because I don't follow them. But I thought they looked stronger last season. I'm sure they'll bounce back again next season. They're back at White Hart Lane in the new stadium, so they'll look to uh, make an impact there. But, like I said, three points is three points. We move on. We've got um, the match against Swansea next, where we can win the Premier League. So look out for that review next week. We've also got more football content coming up between now and, and next week as well. So keep an eye out for daily football contented videos don't forget to check out my social media if you wish uh, links to them there in the description below check out my second channel check out my brother's partner channel mixed doing mixology drinks i'll leave them links up at the end of the video along with mine where you can click 
like and subscribe over there don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments of this video don't forget to subscribe with notifications on we're in for 500 subscribers and hopefully we can hit that soon and let me know what you think in the comments but that's been the review three points is three points and i am ecstatic big game gone five more to go we'll just need one win that's the summary there so i'll see you all again very soon so it's been jsgc hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your weekend peace ciao for now